Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about automations. What are automations? How do you use them? What's the benefit in having them? These are the ways that we build out our smart homes so that things happen automatically for us. I think it's in the name, but let's dive into it and so you can better understand what exactly automations are and how you can use them. I'm going to be adding this to our basics of understanding or building a smart home playlist. I'm going to plug this in right before the contact sensor video. So after light switches and light bulbs, but before contact sensors. I found in the contact sensor video, I was talking a lot about automations. We talked about the KISS principle as well. Keep it simple, stupid. But I realized I didn't give you enough information. And again, to continuously draw this back to basics so that everybody can have a smart home, I need to help you understand every aspect of it. So today, we're going to talk about automations. I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use them, different things you can do with them, and why automations are so powerful and so necessary in our smart homes. What exactly is an automation? Simply put, an automation is something that happens automatically. It's some type of code that is set up and written so that when one thing happens, another thing responds. It's almost like Newton's law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Kind of like that, but not exactly. The simple way to put it, as we talked about in contact sensors, if you've watched that one, or if you haven't, here's a bit of a teaser. Whenever you open a door and the contact sensor is opened, the magnets no longer register as closed, or considered open, you can set it up so that it tells or gives a command to turn on a light switch or light bulb or various other things. There's a lot of things you could do, but for that, this example, we'll keep it simple. So an automation is something that you set up so that when one thing happens, another thing will happen. There's a whole app out there called If This Then That, or it's called IFFT, If This Then That. Super simple. If this happens, then this happens. That's all automations are. Now we can build on these. We can make them super complex. We can make it, well, if this happens and if these parameters are met, then this happens, but not always. There's so many different ways that we can build out automations and there's so many different programs out there to help us build those automations. Generally, whenever you're using a smart home app like Acara or even Alexa, there's automations that are built into it. Some of the more basic applications like Acara, they have very simple if-then statements. They're not super complex. When you get into something like Home Assistant or even Hubitat, then you can further build out your automations and set various parameters around them. I think one of the best ways to be able to show you on how to set up automations or some of the things that you can do with it is to simply show you. So I'm gonna first start by showing you through an app. I've got my iPad here, and I've got my Tuya app open already. And then later on, I'm gonna show you how to do it through something called Home Assistant and some of the more fancy style automations that we can set up through there. A simple way we can do this is once we open up our app, we can go into our scenes section. Sometimes it's called scenes over automations, but you can see in here. So we can click on create a scene, and there's various options that we have available to be able to set up. I think the best thing to show you is something as simple as turning on lights whenever a certain time is reached. So we're gonna go ahead and click on schedule and we're gonna set a time that we want that to happen. For instance, I get up and, and I'm usually downstairs by 8 a.m. So we're gonna set some, uh, a scene to happen at eight o'clock and we want it to happen on the weekdays because those are the days that I'm up at that time and those are the weekdays when I'm going, getting ready for work. So we're gonna set it to repeat on those days we're gonna go next, and then we're gonna be able to choose if this happens, then this is what will happen. So if it's 8 a.m., then we're going to control a single device. And then we also have all our different rooms up here. We're gonna just go into kitchen here, and we're gonna turn on our kitchen cans. We're gonna make sure our brightness is set to 100%, and dimmer is going to turn it on. We're gonna hit next one more time. And so here we go. There's other preconditions we can set up as well. Um, but we're not gonna worry about those ones right now. We're just gonna go ahead and hit save. So now we're gonna give it a name. In this case here, we're gonna call it Kitchen Cans 8 a.m. What that's gonna do for us, and we wanna be very careful about what you name things because you're gonna be adding a lot of automations in here. Sometimes you can have the ability to give it a description. 
Other times, you're just going to simply have to give it a name and call it good. So make sure the name that you're giving it is something unique and specific to what exactly it does. So another name we might give to this one here is Kitchen Cans on Weekdays. There's all different things you can name it, just keep it unique. You can also see that they give you different options for automations to set up. So they give you some examples of things that you can set up in your home to be able to help you for various different things. Energy efficient lighting, turning off a fan according to the temperature, or maybe you want a fan turned on according to a temperature. I remember there was a time where I had set up my fireplace to turn on if the temperature dropped below a certain degree. But what's also great is you can combine different conditions in there. One of the things that I had set up was that whenever my, one of the things I had set up is whenever the temperature dropped below a certain amount, if my presence sensor detected that somebody was actively in the living room, then it would turn on the fireplace for you. But again, only if both of those conditions were met. So it had to detect that somebody was in there and it needed to be able to detect that it dropped below a certain temperature. I then would set it on a timer so that after an hour, it automatically turned off no matter what. One other one I'd like to show you is how to turn on lights whenever the sun goes down. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go to, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna click on when weather changes and we're gonna click on sunset or sunrise. In this case here, we're gonna use sunset and we wanna do it probably be about 15 minutes before sunset because you already know most of the time the delight, it starts getting a little dark. You can even set it up, look, you can even do five hours. I don't know, that's a little weird, but I have done as early as 30 minutes ahead of time. We'll just go ahead and hit next again. So we've got that if then statement again. So if the sun is setting and it's prior to 30 minutes, then we're going to turn on a light. In this case here, we're gonna do um, our, where to go? Living room cans. So in this case here, it's the can lights in my living room. We're gonna make sure they're set to 100%. That dimmer is set to on. Next, and we're just gonna go ahead and hit save and again, give it a unique name. That's as simple as it is. All you have to do is find something that you want done when this happens and then choose what device you want to have adjusted at that time. That's all done through the Tuya app. You can also do things through Alexa as well. I'm going to show you a couple things on how to do them in Home Assistant. Here we are in Home Assistant. I'm not going to dive too far into what exactly Home Assistant is. It's where you can take all of your different smart devices, almost no matter which company it's with. So currently, you know, you have one app for one company, another app for another company. It's very difficult. Whereas Home Assistant gives us the ability to incorporate all of these. Now there are some that don't work. It's an open source software. So you have all different types of people that are helping build these things out. It's been fr pretty frustrating because sometimes companies won't allow us to do this. I've used the MyQ door opener and they actually removed the access through here. And it's pretty frustrating because I like having all of my smart devices in one app versus multiple different applications. So in here is Home Assistant. This is what I utilize. I'll link a video down here, down below, if you'd like to learn more about it. It's a very powerful tool to be able to build out your smart home. It's something that I would like to learn more about myself and I'm still learning about every single day. In here, we're gonna go into our automations and scenes. You can see I've got all different ones built out already, but I'm just gonna show you here. We're gonna create a new automation. We're gonna do this from scratch. And what's really great here is the way that they've set this up. So when this happens, if this is met, then do this. We can keep it simple and we can say when the sun, so here we go into the sun, when the sun sets and offset 30 minutes and then then do, and we just do device and we can do the living room cans, simple. Turn the li living room cans on, as simple as that, we set the brightness to 100. So that's also can be done through Home Assistant. It's a simple way to do it just that way. There's lots of other things we can do as well with this. I like to use my F2P sensor. So when the, and then I find the FP2, I always call it the wrong thing. I call it the F2P, it's FP2, becomes occupied or uh, not occupied. Let's even do that. And then I like to set it to a certain amount of time because we don't want it to be as soon as it's no longer occupied that it shuts the lights off. 
be, you want to give it a few moments because you might just be coming back into it and you don't want these to continuously trigger every single time. So we can have it set to if it's not, if the living room has not been occupied now for five minutes, then, and we can go, whoops, we can search for a device and then we're going to do living room and we can just have it set to turn living room off. So instead of having to go through every individual device in there, because I have living room cans, I have my main living room light, and then I also have like, I, I call them couch lights. It's an LED light strip that is actually behind the couch. So whenever we're watching movies, we want more ambient style lighting. We'll have those turn on. We can just have these uh, turn off everything. So it just says, hey, anything that's on in the living room, just shut it off after five minutes, or we can even set it for like 10 minutes or something like that. There's all different kinds of really cool things that we can do. We can set param parameters around it as well. So there's other complex things. So and this or if that or this. So you can set it so it says like an or statement would mean or one of these statements is met. And and means both of these statements need to be met. Both of these statements need to be met before it will trigger whatever it might need to be. An example of that might need uh, be that an entity, so I do my wife, honestly. <laughs> See, like my wife is not home or something like that. But, or, so you could say test if one condition matches. So if my wife's home, then it would, for some reason, not want to trigger that one. Or even myself, you know, I, I can even have it set to be both of us if we wanted to. There was one I had set up for a while for my garage where... Um, it's not in here anymore, so I can't even show you how I did it before. But the way I had it set up was that if we both left the house, if it registered that both of our cell phones were no longer in the home, then it would automatically close our garage door after it had been open and we had left the range of our home, basically. So what was really cool about that is whenever we left, I didn't really have to hit the button in our vehicle to close our garage door and I would get a notification that the garage door had been closed. So I didn't really have to worry about like, well, what if it didn't close? The other thing I had it set up to do for us was whenever I would return home or my wife would return home and we hadn't been home for five minutes, then it would automatically register to turn uh, or open the garage door for us. Again, my queue removed or Chamberlain removed the access to having my queue inside Home Assistant here. So it's a little frustrating. I don't have that ability to do that anymore. From what I understand, there's still a way to do it, but it's just a little bit more complex and I'm trying to keep everything all in one place here. That's my struggle that I'm working on right now. The thing I've learned most about automations is you have to play with it. It takes time to understand them and the best thing you can do is watch YouTube videos like you're doing right now, or just play with the program itself and figure out how to set up automations, figure out the different things that you can do with them. I'm always just opening this thing and just kind of seeing what options are available. The biggest thing you always want to keep in mind is two things. One, if you're a husband in doing this, you need your wife approval factor. Make sure your wife approves. Don't do something that's really crazy. If she doesn't like it. And if it doesn't make sense, then don't do it. Automations are here to keep our life simple. If it makes it too complex or there's too many moving parts or it actually requires more effort to get the thing done, like for instance, just pressing the light switch, I still utilize my light switches. Just because I have automations set up doesn't mean I don't use them. I just have found ways to minimize the amount of time that I need to go press the light switch. For instance, you grab yourself some snacks from the kitchen, you go sit down on the couch, you forget to turn off the kitchen lights. That's what automations are for. It can You have a way to register that there's no one in the kitchen. It's going to turn the lights off for you automatically. The other principle I'd like you to keep in mind is what I call KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Your automation should be simple. If this happens, then this happens. If you need to set up multiple different iterations of the same automation to be able to get it to do different things in different situations, then do that. Don't add in a bunch of different parameters that just don't make sense or overcomplicate the automation to the point where it doesn't even make any sense anymore. Overall, have fun with it. Make sure you're doing something that you're enjoying when you're playing with these. And like I said, keep it simple. Make sure your wife approves and you'll have a lot of fun with these automations. I hope you've learned something today. Again, my name is Ian here at IntelliHomes. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this with a friend, 
Tell me what automation is your favorite automation that you've set up in your own smart home. I hope to see you guys again soon. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.